Don John is a 2013 romantic comedy written and directed by Joseph Gordon-Levitt, starring Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Scarlett Johansson, Julianne Moore, and Tony Danza. There's only a few things I really care about in life. My body, my pad, my ride, my family, my church, my boys, my girls, and my porn. My body, my pad, my ride, my family, my church, my boys, my girls, my porn. Body, pad, ride, family, church, boys, girl. Baby, what are you doing? I was just reading emails. No, you weren't. She caught me watching porn. That's it? Right? Oh! How do you watch that? How do you watch all the stupid movies that you watch? Movies and porno are different, John. They give awards for movies. They give awards for porn, too. How about that? A romantic comedy. Who knew? Welcome back to the Cult of Film. But it's me, Coleman Yeti, and I'm joined here tonight by Johnny Mulligans. Johnny, how you doing? Oh, I was slightly traumatized. Just a little bit. <laughs> you know, I figured you were going to say that. See, I, I made the mistake of tunning, taking Dunning's recommendation that this was a romantic comedy at face value. And pair that with the, the, the trust that I have built for someone like Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Levitt and, and hit record. Like, I know that actor and that platform as being, like, a really cool space to see good acting and content and all that good stuff. And um, it's the only reason I stayed after the, you know, through the first <laughs> ten minutes of this movie. <laughs> this isn't, like, what I call a first pick for a, a movie on a Monday night sitting down with the missus. I was like... Oh yeah, it's Joe Scored Lennon. Hit record, it's good stuff. I'll bet it'll be good. <laughs> I, I cashed in a lot of street cred. Just gone. This this wasn't a great movie to watch with the wife, Johnny? Not first pick. Sorry. N that said, knowing what I know about the actor and the direct the actor director and, and the the platform, the content creation platform that helped produce this movie, it had a lot of credibility for me, so I was like I was willing to sit through that awkwardness to see where they were going with this. And that was mm -hmm. that, that. I think that's an important part for this one because, at face value, if you're just taking it for what you're seeing in the first five minutes, you're just this is just like some the first one, forty-five minutes. First forty-five minutes, it can seem very superficial, to just glance at and be like, oh, this is just yeah, that kind of. Movie. I'm gonna give a forewarning now. Uh, spoilers. Um, this movie came out in 2013, so you've had your opportunity to see it, and also. This episode is going to be very NSFW because it is not really possible to talk about the movie without using some some big language. Well, you know what? I'm going to see if I can dance around it as best as I can. <laughs> oh, I, I can't wait, Johnny. Challenge accepted. <laughs> so tell me, what is Don John about? Don John is about a basically, uh, it's kind of a condom condemnation of these societal traps that people find their way into that people act a certain way or expect a certain thing or think life happens in a certain order and and that is that is how it's supposed to go and this movie picks that apart and gives you examples of why one way of thinking is wrong and one-sided and another way of thinking is also wrong and one-sided and they do this with the backdrop of sexual and porn addiction basically and the fact that it was it was weird to be like joseph gordon levitt here's a scene he's sitting at a computer and he's just watching porn oh maybe it's time to try something new so this isn't awkward at all. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen a lot of, actually, I was thinking about it, I've seen a lot of work by Joseph Gordon-Levitt. I've seen him in Inception and The Dark Knight Rises. I saw him in The Chicago 7. I watched him back when he was on Third, third Rock from the Sun. Third Rock, um, oh, like, yeah. Yeah, that, back when he was a kid. Like The guy's been doing work for a long time, and he has some really great projects through Hit Record. So like those two pieces together, paired up with what I'm seeing in the beginning of this movie, I'm like... I'm kind of in shock. I'm like, where? What's happening here? I'm. Oh man, tell me this gets better. It's got to get better, right? 
please tell it got better. It did get better. He's an addict, basically. He plays the role of Don John or John, I can't forget, remember his last name, but his friends call him the Don because he's this bartender player, hangs out at the clubs, you know, lots of one night stands. And then he's always going to his computer because that's to him, porn is always better than the real thing because of X, Y, and Z. Missionary is the worst position in all of fucking. They, they paint this picture of somebody who has these habits and is like always going to church and confessing. And it's, it's like, it's like as they go to those scenes, like he's got this like fist pump at the end of confessions. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> he's really rocking that North Jersey stereotype. They're all very heavily north jersey i was really just happy to see tony danza playing a guy not named tony uh <laughs> way to break that stereotype tony danza <laughs> yeah it was it was fun to and the cast they had good casting on this one too is they've got what brie larson is the sister and she has a line a single line in the whole movie but we see plenty like anytime out there at the dinner table she's always bored and on her phone and in church she's always bored and on her phone and it was kind of like by the time she gets to her line at the end of the movie, if you haven't picked up on the little hints, they breadcrumbs of like hints they've been dropping along the way about what's wrong with Don John and what's wrong with Barbara, like she freaking spells it out right there because right. not not for the audience's sake, but because it's painfully obvious that the parents aren't getting it. what was their goal here, like what was their message, and that's where I came up with like there, are all of these people in this movie. Are, are working off of these preconceived notions of what they think they should be. Like, his mother thinks, she's like, I look like a grandmother, I should be a grandmother already. And he's got his ideas. And then, like, even Barbara, played by Scarlett Johansson, Johansson she's got this idea of, like, the man's supposed to bend over backwards and do what, make all these changes. And, and if they the woman, really right. love her, they're going to do everything for her. And change she's manipulative as shit. They cast her as this lady in red, like a super hot dream girl at the bar. And then as we get to know her character on and on, we find all these things like that are just these things that become annoyances or just are just straight up points of note, like non-negotiables that she's just not going to bend on because she's decided it, her life needs to be a movie personification of, you know, like basically take what she's using the movie and make it real life is like, Oh yeah, and that doesn't that doesn't work. And, that's and she the puts movie. weird, crazy expectations on on John. But I want to go back to the Brie Larson. So everyone in that family has that heavy, heavy New York or Jersey accent. You're on that side. You probably have a better idea that that's North Jersey. Mm -hmm. You seem pretty certain of that. I'm from uh, North Jersey. Like oh, there you go. I, when I was younger, we moved up to upstate New York, and you know my accent would kind of. It was funny when I moved where I moved to people said jesus crow and in my head's like jesus christ just say it right already but it was a totally <laughs> different because there's a different vote like there's a different little vernacular like i don't vernacular. know vernacular yeah different vernacular a whole different vocabulary that people were yeah. working with up here so uh, you know that was the whole i was too young to like actually understand that but right you know my but accent faded off and then in college when i was a resident assistant i had a whole bunch of kids that were from you know, Long Island and, and Staten Island and North Jersey and every like my accent just went right, came right back in. I was like, oh, God, it takes and me you back. still have a little bit of it now. I co yeah, you it'll sound, come through. You sound very different from myself and John the host. Yep. Not, yep. not to be confused with Don John. <laughs> no. <laughs> very, very different. No. Um, but the other piece I wanted to uh, mention on Brie Larson is she's basically just Silent Bob. That's right. <laughs> yes. That girl, she has her own agenda. She doesn't care about Johnny. She doesn't know the first thing about him. She just wants a guy who's going to do whatever she tells him to. It is a good thing that she broke up with you. Thanks. You know, there's a million fine-looking women in the world, dude, but they don't all bring you lasagna at work. Most of them just cheat on you. So she's just like yes. crappy silent Bob. She's on her phone the whole time, doesn't say a single thing throughout the entire movie. Says at the end again in zero accent whatsoever, has to say some profound thing for the family to hear, but it's exactly Silent Bob, you know? Just that... no lines throughout the whole movie. He's just there. They make sure to show you yeah. uh, Silent Bob be there, not saying anything until he finally comes out with that like profound statement somewhere towards the end. 
where everyone <laughs> shuts up and listens, you know, until Jay calls it out in a later movie and is like, what the fuck, man? You just come out and say some weird shit. <laughs> yeah, everyone, Brie Larson is in this movie, but eh, kind of. Uh, other cast members I really appreciated is so they had two fake movies in the middle of this movie. And they had other actors with fake names. Romantic movie they showed that had Anne Hathaway and Channing Tatum. But billed as different people in the movie. The pretty woman. The pretty man. Love at first sight, the first kiss, the breakup, the makeup, the expensive wedding, and they drive off into the sunset. Everyone knows it's fake, but they watch it like it's real fucking life. So good on Joseph Gordon-Levitt to have those friendships that he can just go get some other major A-list actors <laughs> so wait, that was actually... to be in a fake movie. Uh, a second one they're watching had Cuba Gooding Jr. in it. <laughs> Another fake movie. Pulled yes. In Cuba. Oh they my had two God. fake romantic movies that they watch in this movie that they pulled yeah, like I... massive name actors to put in there. Yeah, that's gotta, that's gotta be Joseph pulling in. Like he's, he's worked with so many people too. Like he, yeah. think about it. Like think of all the paths he's crossed. Like, what was it? He's worked with who? Who is Dark Knight? Was that Chris Nolan? Yeah. So he's worked with Chris Nolan. He's crossed paths with all those, all the major actors in these big films. So yeah, he's he's got a fantastic network to pull down some really cool names for this. Previous point, Johnny. There was another Brie in this movie. It's Brie Olson. She's a porn actress, and I'm a hundred percent sure that's why you knew who it was. No, no, no. <laughs> Now I know. Thank you, Coleman, <laughs> for enlightening me. You're welcome. So I think that it, it's presented at the beginning that uh, JGL is a scumbag. John is a, is a scumbag. You know, he's just out trying to get laid constantly. His friends all completely objectify women, so they all have a scoring system on all of them, and that's they argue and bicker over how hot each one is. Red. Shit, right? That's a dime. That is a dime. Nah, she's hot, but it's not a dime. Yo, I don't even mess with blondes like that, but that right there is a dime. Fuck yeah, it is. Enter the picture Barbara, who he's supposed to be, you know, falling in love with, whatever. Well, she is ma manipulative as hell. And, I mean, everything around this movie and the whole, like, transformation that John uh, goes through throughout the movie, everything revolves around sex. You know, he's jerking off how two three times a day he'll like sleep with a girl and go like you know spank it immediately after he's done sleeping with her and essentially because he's built unrealistic expectations around what sex should be so even when he gets with the dime because he's uh so self-centered in his sexual behaviors it's just not the same for him because it's not all of the stuff that he sees in porn because there's no no connection uh, with sex for him. Uh, but you start feeling bad for him. Barbara becomes so manipulative. You know, she, and again, it revolves around sex. So she, like, talks him into meeting her family and taking a night class and doing all this stuff that he didn't really want to do yet uh, by dry humping him in the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> and it suggested more than once. Yes, as he's going through his laundry, as, as we see by his crusty pants later oh, on. God, all the pairs. Like, <laughs> man, this must have been like one of those challenge accepted moments for him in his acting careers. Like he it's... wrote the movie, though. Oh God, Wait, <laughs> he wrote he this. wrote it too, and he, he directed wrote it, it. He directed it, and he starred in it. So <laughs> I, you know, I I wish okay, I knew this, his motivations. This changes were lots of things. Movie. I really I had all these preconceived notions about. No, just Gordon Levin. No, but this no. is his movie, and then it shows him cycle through the relationship and get out of the relationship. She dumps him because she catches him watch watching porn for a second time, and she just has this expectation. I mean, of all the other expectations that she has, like you're not allowed to clean your house anymore. You're going to get that, a house. Yeah, because I that said was, that seemed weird. It seemed yeah. like it, at that point, like they've been dropped. Like I said, they've been dropping little hints about these little quirks and kind of little comments she's made but when it came to the mop it's like 
don't you dare clean your floors. That just, it turns me off. So like, the, the dude keeps his place immaculate. You know, in addition to all the other things she that, that she expects of him, she catches him watching porn at the end and breaks up with him for it. And I'm on the friend side on this. Like, I could see how that could be a fight, but not like an immediate, I'm breaking up with you. You know, we'll go through the next portion of the movie, the second half where he meets uh, the older lady in his class who's going through some shit, but mm -hmm. teaches him like how to connect as a human is kind of re really what it all boils down to. Yeah, I, and I think that's where this movie sh change, you know, it, it shifts gears into something that's diving below the surface. Like, you finally start seeing, and as you get to that part of the movie where he's getting into that interaction with Julianne Moore's character, we learn little bits, and like, we don't get all full picture of necessarily what's going on. We get a, you know, we get, she says plainly enough that her husband basically makes it clear that her husband and her son had died in a car crash like right she's broken in a sense she has a major trauma in her life and just 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 as in a similar fashion john don john's cat the the john character he's broken too he's he's got all you know you look at it's he's a carbon copy of his father basically he's got these weird expectations he can't function socially in terms of a personal relationship because of his his porn addiction so right you know they're these two broken people and what i liked the way what happened was you've like this is where i'm talking about these these this condemnation of societal traps of these preconceived notions this is what it's supposed to be like and this is what everybody does it this way no like the actual relationship he gets into with julian moore's character is neither of those it's not them you know running you know running off from the altar getting married and hitched it's just like they're both just kind of finding their way together and right connecting in a time of need but he never knew how to connect before that and yeah. she really needed the connection and again that's not and they they call it out it's not you mm -hmm. know falling in love and getting married and running off it's him just learning how to I mean, as they say, lose himself in another person, but really him just learning actual human connection versus just mm -hmm. like everything's my car, my church, my house, my women, and my porn. <laughs> I'd go further than saying that he's broken because of the porn addiction. It's like you were saying, he's just like his dad. He just has this like expectation or, or this idea growing up, like these are just the things that matter mm -hmm. because he's never actually connected with someone on a real level, um, which happened, you know, not only with Julianne Moore, but when his friend broke in, like, came to his house halfway through the movie and was like, hey, what's going on with you? And, like, actually sat him down and he kept trying to be defensive. He's like, no, real talk, what's going on? Yeah. And he made him, like, be, like, open up. And then, you know, they show at the end when he actually hangs out with his friends rather than going home with some girl at the end of the night. And he's like, yeah, I just wanted to hang out with you guys. And that that's where this movie, I think, pulls itself into out of the superficial and, and does get into something a little more purposeful. Like taking it from what in the beginning seems like juvenile t level kind of entertainment to something that becomes actually... I don't know, reflective. It becomes something worth watching. And and that's what I liked about this movie. I think that's where... And that's what I was waiting for. Like, that's the thing. Like, because I've seen lots of his other work, and because I, I like what he has done with Hit Record, as just, you know... And just for as a, an aside here, for if anybody who's never heard of HitRecord.com, Joseph Gordon-Levitt set up this media platform, basically, for creative minds to interact it's like crowdsourcing for content so if you're a photographer a cartoonist a writer whatever um you go to hit record and there are these projects that pop up and people collaborate and if any of these projects ever generate revenue whoever's work is used for that project gets a cut of that revenue it, you know percentages vary but that was that's like this public outsourced project for content creation and it's a really cool concept so like seeing what he's done there that and and knowing what he's done as an actor really pulled me into like i want to see this i want to finish this i want to see this movie through because if you just walk into the first five minutes of it you know nothing else you're just gonna you're either gonna be 
I I don't know, really into it, or you're gonna be like, eh. <laughs> and and that's that's the thing. Like it's good to do some research on on who made this and how they made this. You may be really into it for reasons other than why you're supposed to appreciate the movie. <laughs> it's dead ass. The blowjob, the cowboy, the doggy, the money shot, and that's it. I don't got to say anything. I don't got to do anything. I just fucking lose myself. <laughs> like, oh, man, this guy likes all the cool shit and porn. Yeah. Oh. Again, he wrote this, so it's an interesting platform. You know, it really was. It seemed like the whole point was to to humanize Don John. And then at the end, you know, he meets back up with uh, Barbara. And she shows that she's the exact same person. He just tries to apologize in general just to be like, hey, I apologize for any way I may have wronged you. And again, it was just like him being humanized. Yeah. And her being like, yeah, you should be because you're selfish. <laughs> Yeah, and that that was just kind of like the yeah you know, Scarlett Johansson's doing a good job of of put, kind of portraying the ugly personality of of that character, like the inflexibility to understand that he's going through his own change, and he's not arguing with her. He calls her out on her stuff being one sided. She tries calling him out, and he's like, "Well, yeah, yeah, that's a problem. Like, it, right? It was the same problem. So right? He's owning his shit. Yeah." And even then, she just doesn't want to deal with it. She's just like, nope, you're supposed to do it this way. I hope that you haven't been watching this show with your kids, as they probably <laughs> learned some new words today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, also, a fun part that I enjoyed and can personally relate to, it's just um, the North Jersey road rage. That what you said? Huh? Ah! I haven't punched anyone's windows out, but screaming at a steering wheel, <laughs> I, I get it. That made that was like that fit that character. Ah, perfect. I mean, I'm in the Pacific Northwest, and there's a bunch of hippies up here. I've yelled at plenty of them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you just have to be in Jersey for that. I do like that the uh, car was like a very clear extension of his masculinity. Oh God, yeah, a super stock. I mean, so what was that? A sh was it a Shelby or what? I think it was a she uh, Chevelle. I think is what I saw. A super super special. Yeah. 1972 yeah i mean it, it, don't get me wrong it's a cool car but you can see those guys and you can see when it's just a like it's a piece of them <laughs> like it's an extension yep. of their penis <laughs> yep that's right because so. tight jeans can only show so much <laughs> all right and tight uh muscle shirts that you wear to the mm -hmm. club yeah, don't forget to say your Hail Millers when you're doing chest workouts. <laughs> you know, that's not a bad idea. I might work out more if I was, I was just, religious. He was, his character was so efficient. That's the other <laughs> thing. Like, there were some, there's so many things he did right. It was like, oh, I got things to do. Time management. I guess I better do my Hail Marys at the gym. <laughs> that's true. It was just, you know, the lack of personality behind it. I appreciated the Julianne Moore character and... The progression of him meeting her and her meeting him and kind of like yeah. how she introduced him to being human. <laughs> I, I I liked actually her – She her character had this like no nonsense and calling, calling shit what it is. Like walks up on him. He's watching porn on his phone. What? Right now, it's okay. No, or, no, I'm not judging Look. you. And, she, and you know, she doesn't necessarily, you know, let on right away that she she caught him doing that. But just just as she's having conversation about class with him, she's just like, "So what are you doing watching porn?" I'm like, oh, right. you saw that? Oh, yeah. She didn't miss anything. She's, but she doesn't judge him for it, right? No, and that's so the she's thing. like, "I'm not judging you." You know, it's the polar opposite of what he has, where it's all of these expectations and judgments and everything else. And she's like, "I'm not judging you outside of the fact that you're watching shitty porn." Like, <laughs> let me <laughs> let me just buy up. you this. Yeah, yeah, here's a copy of some vintage classics. Yeah, this is a better porn. You should watch this one because it's good. <laughs> but she's very real with him throughout you know like mm -hmm. like you're saying there's no 
fakeness to the relationship. She's very real and honest with him about himself, about herself. You know, they kind of hook up a couple times and then that's when she's randomly breaking down because, as you said, we find out about her family, Mm -hmm. you know, and he finds her like that and she's just real to him. And I think in her openness is how he learns openness, is how he learns to communicate and, again, just be human. (laughs) Yeah. Have connection. I think that... The, the the move that the dynamic of that relationship and how those characters kind of found their way to each other was an important part of this movie. I think that was like they they open up this movie where the these young bachelors are just hanging out at clubs rating all these women on a number scale, and he gets to Jul- as he gets to Julia Mer- Moore's character, you you know she's that number scale is not going to work here. Because there's a whole other level that he, that they're working on. Like there's not, it's not just on the appearance of whether or not they, she wore the dress right. Like right, that's not the game anymore. And I think they did a great job portraying that. Like there was more substance to what's happening with that relationship. So we have those parallels, and uh, I I appreciated that. I appreciated that it was this unconventional kind of relationship that's happening with these two characters and it becomes the one that actually yielded yields the most meaningful purpose for them and that was you know this is gonna we don't know if it's gonna last forever that's not the point it's like and they they even the dialogue from his character even says that says so right so that that alone like it, it really brought the movie together for me that that point where how oh, cool this isn't He's not a schmuck anymore. He's less schmucky. Yeah, yeah. and I would say a, a piece that I just thought about. It, it's not the happily ever after that he talks about. Like in the beginning, he talks about women having this unrealistic expectation. They love, they love the romantic movies because they like the whole story that everyone knows is fake, but they say it's real, you know. And it ends with the, you know, the happily ever after driving off into the sunset, and. It, this is not that it didn't end like that very intentionally yeah and again i mean it's self-aware in that like you know this is not like love riding off into the sunset whatever it's just it's good who would you recommend this to <laughs> <laughs> your mom and grandma yeah I'm assuming <laughs> um the uh yeah i would say if you, this movie works for a lot of people I think if you're if you're bored by like superficial kind of stuff like they portray in the beginning of this movie the the care as they're building up these characters and sh- showing their patterns that's gonna not make sense and not like be a fit for you you're not gonna be interested in that if you're not interested in seeing any kind of porn whatsoever and they don't give us like full-on segments you just get snippets it's yeah this might not be your cup of tea but if you're looking for a good dialogue on issues when it comes to how people relate to others and why there are preconceived notions that don't mix or make sense, this takes that message, they break it down, and then they bring you to a, to another story at the by the end of the movie that does show more depth in the characters. So it, it's a good movie. If you're a Joseph Gordon-Levitt fan, absolutely check this movie out because I think he did a great job with this. I think what we what we get as a final product is a movie with substance. It, it starts to be more of a reflection of actual real life. And it's a, it's a good movie overall. So if even if, I think it's for anybody to try. You know, like like I said, like in the beginning, if you're, it, learn about Joseph Gordon-Levitt, check out Hit Record, understand where this project is coming from and understand the actor. And if you can get on board with all the other work he's done, it's easier to get through the beginning of this movie and get onto the point where they start getting below the surface. And and that's, I think it can work for a lot of people. I, w- I think as most people can ham- can enjoy this. If you're not into naked bodies, maybe not the first <laughs> 25, 30 minutes. Yeah, you may want to skip out that first half. You know, I honestly don't know who I would recommend this for. It's... It's one of those movies that I watched, and it's not 
you know, in talking about it, I appreciate the story, but it's not a great movie to me, and it's not a bad movie. It's just kind of out there in the ether. You know, I watched it when it first hit video years ago, and then uh, revisited it now. I mean, yes, if you're not offended by all the nakedness in the beginning and, and the subject matter in the beginning, because you really have to get through that first half to get to the second half, in which there's still a lot of sex, but it becomes a different kind of sex. And if you're willing to weather that journey, <laughs> you know, and, and I don't know who is. Again, yeah, JGG is great. Like you kind of said in the beginning, it's not like I wouldn't want to start this movie on a date night. You know, <laughs> as a as a romantic comedy, this isn't the breakup. It's not some jennifer aniston vehicle whatever it's a very very different movie and if you go into yes. it with understanding that that's what it is you're gonna be pretty uh Just, maybe upset maybe really excited i don't know i don't know what you're I into don't know. if you know what this is where you have an open discussion with whoever you're bringing into the movie to show them like right don't make don't make it a first date movie probably not <laughs> <laughs> no, this is a, this is someone you've dated for a while, and even then, you maybe give them a disclosure beforehand. Yeah, like, put, throw up like a here's how the first half of this is gonna go, but it gets better. <laughs> <laughs> or break it down like a Tarantino film and start in the half for, for, for the middle half, watch the back end <laughs> first, go. and then go <laughs> see. So then you fully understand. Yeah, yeah. know where they came Perfect. from. Perfect. <laughs> and with that, Johnny, where can everyone find you? Oh, uh, you can find me skulking around here at the Cult of Films, and you can find me on the Twitters at CMDR underscore Hamilton. Uh, I play Magic the Gathering, and I, that's my Twitter handle. And there it is. <laughs> All right, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Coleman Yeti. Uh, you can find me right here on the Cult of Films. And also you can find me at the channel Cascade Backcountry on YouTube, where I'm occasionally going on cool adventures with a friend of mine. Uh, look out for a new video in the next couple weeks. I'm out of here. Hey, I'm out of here. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night.